And with that, I think we're live now. Cool. Oh my god, everything's so I need to turn this I need to turn to you guys down on my end. Holy oh. shit. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, I forget how loud you guys can be. Like Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I was so rambunctious. No, yeah, no. Just the most rambunctious. Too too rambunctious. Um Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of the Valvacast. This is episode 25. Wow. Yeah. Sweet. We, oh, we can rent a car now. <laughs> Sweet. Is that, is that the age? It's 25, it might be 26. Really? Whatever. I, I'm surprised that like age. there's like a hard number for that. Yeah, no, well it's just so random because everything else is like, you know, the big milestones are 18 and 21 for when you get to do stuff, right? And then, and then random, except for renting a car. That doesn't happen till, uh Age 25. Maybe it's in some states. I don't know. Okay. Fuck it. Uh, yeah, fuck it. Whatever. Yeah, it might be specific to like, the agency. Did any of you mm. guys, have you guys gotten a chance to see the thumbnail for this particular video? No, I should probably check that out. Okay, I just, but... you know, just, just letting you guys know. Um, so, anyways, welcome to another exciting episode of the Velvacast. I'm your host, Mitch. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Sora. <laughs> I just saw the fucking icon. That's <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> oh, <Josh. laughs> We have Gangle Coon in the chat, plus we have all the goobs on the Discord, which leads me right into channel announcements this week. Uh, this week we're still doing fi uh, Final Fantasy. We're still doing Persona 5 on uh, on uh, Monday, the 29th. Even though it's Memorial Day, I just wanted to let everyone know that we're doing that. Um, also, we have some new things that we wanted to just talk about real quick, which means I just wanted to talk about it real quick. Um... <laughs> We now have, after after getting messages and stuff about it, we finally have a tip jar set up where you guys can give uh, donations if you so choose to. Um, we've been fighting about whether or not, not me and Sora and Josh, but I have internally been fighting my own persona about how to do this because I didn't really feel like a Patreon would be the right thing to do because we don't produce enough stuff for a Patreon. <laughs> um, and I thought... and so. I, what you're telling me is that we've resorted to a cyber by cyber baiting, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. fuck off! You, everyone, <laughs> every one of you has been like, so Mitch, maybe we should get something set up, and oh, I finally sure. do it, and you're just gonna give me shit for it. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's, that's how that exists for a man. Oh my god, <laughs> Josh, ruining the cat. No, I'm just messing. Um. <sighs> so like. So yeah, we have uh, we have a PayPal.me thing down below. Uh, I'm not sure if it's gonna work or not in terms of like how I'm gonna feel about it. Like maybe I will set up a Patreon, but I figured like if we had some form of monetary goals that that could be cool. But it, it, a reminder: everything that goes in the tip jar goes straight to the channel. The channel does cost a pretty penny to keep up sometimes in terms of like uh, renewing wires and that kind of shit and. And, you know, it. I always feel weird about this kind of stuff, you know what I mean? But, yeah, no, but, I get it, but, but it, 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 seriously, it, it's not necessary at all to donate, like, the, just watching us, like, it is more than enough, it's awesome to have the small but dedicated fans that we do have, so. Yeah, absolutely. Any... I, I didn't want anyone to feel obligated, you know what I mean? Right, no, so. I gotcha. Yeah, so, uh... Yeah, and it, and all the on all the tip jar does not go straight into a, a loot box fund. I promise. Sure, that's right. <laughs> you, need to, you need to dispel the notion that you're just this is just funding your loot box. Uh, yeah, no, no. I just I set up the tip jar. Loot box addiction. Yeah, no. We're gonna get into that in just a second. Um, oh, no. And then I, I just wanted to say real quick. Um, we uh we're gonna start. I know I've said this a couple times that the last couple months we actually have recorded new videos, not streams, videos <laughs> that will be oh, man. that will be going up uh, sometime within the next like not not next week, but uh, the week after, just because of scheduling stuff. Um, because guess what? There, I'm gonna be taking some trips during the summer. Um, and I need stuff to go up. <laughs> so, yeah. um, which kind of leads me into, I'm going to like a lot of concerts this summer. I'm going to go see, uh, I'm going to go see Ninja Sex Party. And then I'm also, I might go see One OK Rock, which could be super fun. So Those both sound awesome. I, oh man, seeing NSP would be pretty fucking dope. Oh my god, I, I, I know, I, I, I'm, uh, Gang Widow's the one who set that one up. I actually have to go still get my passport, because I'm a piece of shit like that, and I'm also poor. So, <laughs> <laughs> I need to get my passport so I can go into Toronto, which leads me into the Toronto trip, because I'm going to Toronto. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
and oh, that's right. You had to get your yeah, yeah. Okay, you were talking about this. That's right. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually really excited to do that. Um, I need to do the social media stuff. I totally forgot to do that. Uh, <laughs> real quick, uh, Sora, Josh, uh, what's been going on on your guys' side of the spectrum? Starting with Josh. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, it's mostly like. Uh... Like I'm going to try to like get started into like a D and D group with like the uh, like my coworkers or something. and uh, I don't know how it's going to come along because oh, the scheduling man. stuff is getting like really hectic and stuff. But uh, oh, I wish my I wish I get my coworkers into D and D. Unfortunately, because of where I work, that's not very likely. But still, anyway, um, I'm so sorry. Continue. You need to find you know coworkers who are just as big geeks as you are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That that proves a little difficult. I I don't think my coworkers know how much how much of a huge geek I am. I I had I have a Zelda shirt, and then somebody noted like with a, a shirt with Triforce on it, and then somebody asked me like, "Is that a Zelda shirt?" And I'm like, oh, "Yeah, it is." And they're like, "Wow, like you must be a pretty big nerd." And I'm like, "I guess." <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, no. yeah. wow, you must be lame. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like that, but it's oh, just like no, oh, it, it sounds like something straight out of like a Will Ferrell movie. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like how yeah. specific you that was. Yo, know, Will Ferrell. It has to be Will Ferrell. No, but he, I totally get what he's going for. It, right? It, it totally. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> oh, oh no. Um, no, but it's, it's like I'm just imagining your like coworker being like Ricky Bobby, just like swaggering oh, into the room. No, oh, God. no, no, no. <laughs> oh God, damn. I mean, he knew the sh- he knew what the shirt, but that was my retort. Was like, well, I mean, you knew what the shirt reference was. It doesn't say Zelda on it. You knew the Triforce shape, so you know we're both in this together, buddy. <laughs> no, you know what I want? I want it to be like is that is that our secret Nazi symbol? What? No. <laughs> no. What? Jesus, no! <laughs> hey, is that is culture something? Oh no! Hey, hey, man! I, I totally get it. Fuck the Albert man. Fuck the Albert. <laughs> <laughs> whenever, oh, whenever, you whenever you need, whenever you need to like. You're better than Machina. Uh. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking Machina. All right, all right. Let's get let's get into the to brunt the brunt of it this week because I feel like all of us here have had some form of experience. We didn't even listen to like. Yeah, no, holy shit! But Josh is in the middle of his D and D story. Oh shit! D&D. I'm so sorry. I, 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 I derailed it. That shit. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, tell, tell us about the D and D. I see that Mitchell is just like really really eager to uh, get on with cast. Uh, yeah. Right. Oh. No, so, Josh, did you see the thumbnail for this week's episode? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and indeed. Uh, I'm sure that'll be a, a huge topic that'll to take all of, like, five seconds. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> Josh, you're D&D shit. What's, yeah, what's, yeah. what's the deal? What are you planning on playing? I want to know what edition, because I've always wanted to play D&D. I just never, I've never found a group um, to do it. So uh, I've tried to, like, play tabletop a couple of times. Um, the last couple of times have mostly just fallen apart because, you know, people can't really get off of work. But uh, since I'm working with the uh, coworkers where I am, um, mostly we can sort of work out a lot of this shit because one of them is like my GM for the store. So it's like, oh yeah, it should work out, but you know, I'm still scheduled for the day that we're supposed to have the DND session, so I need to get on everybody about that. But uh, so recently, I uh, I think it's like 3.5 for DND, and I still have to like get my, like, character sheet together for uh, my character, but, like, recently I started listening to the audiobook for Don Quixote. Oh, really? Fucking, I, I want to fucking play as a fucking Don Quixote character. <laughs> Alright, well, <laughs> well, okay, let's 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 give some context. Who, who the fuck's Don Quixote? I know who that is. Oh, yes, the, the man of La Mancha. Yes, the man of fucking La Mancha. You know, tilting at windmills with his, uh... It's... I actually don't know like how like well the uh, Man from La Mancha movie lives up with like the Don Quixote. Oh, it it doesn't. It totally doesn't. Um, like I've never seen Man of La Mancha before. Uh, uh, the idea is is that like the the original book has a is is kind of downer at some points, right? Um, as as you I, I'm like how like I'm not gonna ask how far you are, but I'll just say like it. It's definitely a certain look into things, but like in the in the musical, it's it, the idea is that it's his first draft of of the play, of of his yeah. story. So like it it's oddly more optimistic. Anyways, go on, go on, go on. Uh, I I mean in in the book it's uh so Don Quixote was you know a sort of well respected, intelligent, scholarly man, and then 
he really liked reading books of chivalry, you know, about talking about like knights there and like uh, going around and adventuring and saving damsels in distress and all that shit. Um, and he reads so many that he goes insane and believes that he is a knight errant and uh, goes out and, uh, you know, goes gallivanting around and uh, trying to be, like, the prime example of knight errancy. And uh, so I, I sort of want to, you know, play as, like, something like a cleric, someone who's not exactly the most knightly character, who isn't going to do the most damage, and who believes that, you know, he's the chosen one out to, uh, like, save everybody in the world. And I think it'll be a good deal of fun, you know, <laughs> playing this, like, larger-than-life character. That sounds like a neat, neat, neat little idea. Oh, God, I want to play some D&D. But, yeah, it's, like, you should totally, like, read or, like, uh, listen to, like, the book for Don Quixote, though, if you ever get the chance. Is it? Does it hold up? Is it a good read slash listen? Yeah, it's, it's like, uh, I, I was sort of skeptical coming into it because, you know, I, I hear about, like, all these classics, like, you know, the Odyssey and, like, the Iliad, and I go, yeah. or, like, uh, what was it, like, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, and it's like, you know, I, I sort of read into them, and it's like, ah, uh, you know, okay, Hamlet's okay, but it's like, I just can't get over this, all these archaisms, and it reads sort of strangely to me. It, and my modern like sensibilities, but Don Quixote holds up surprisingly well, and I definitely think that it deserves its place in like that pantheon of like greatest literary works ever. Um, and if you like Don Quixote, I would definitely recommend going down the list and uh, picking up uh, what was it, Candide by uh, Voltaire, because uh, that's also a good hoot too. Mm. Cool. All right. <laughs> so, uh, have I scared anybody off? With my well, we, well, right? six people left the chat, so I don't know. Oh <laughs> not to be real, All right. but we, we had like you 11 people. Six people uh, left. I don't know what to tell you. Something that can throw people off. <laughs> I, we should every time we should we should end the podcast every single time with Josh's section so that like everyone kind of slowly but surely like leaves. We're gonna scare oh you all. That's so, that's so bad. <laughs> oh, well, what do you want me to do? Make light of the fact that we lost six people? <laughs> Which I'm totally, oh, well, it's fine. Oh my god. Anyways, so hi everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Velpcast. Uh, actually, real. Uh, uh, I just want to know how. Do you listen it to it through Audible? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that it's a good sort of service? That there is no huh? Because I was I was thinking about getting it for myself. I, I was just curious. Um, Audible is. Uh, you see, it's strange because I I actually sort of fell off of reading books like a couple of years ago because like sort of you know computers and like phones have all been so like immediate like and like pressing. They're such good like distractions and ways to kill time, but. Uh, Audible is definitely a great way to sort of, like, consume audiobooks, especially if you have, like, you know, downtime anywhere in your day. Hmm. I, okay, so, it, wait, uh, just, I just, I, I gotta know, is it a subscription thing, or is it, like, you pay, like, 30 bucks for an auto, auto, uh, auto, sorry, an audiobook? Um, it's like a, it can be either way. I think um, if you have the subscription, I think you get like a, a credit every month that like uh, allows you to like purchase one book. Oh, cool. Okay. Either that, or you can just you know straight up pay money to uh, buy the books. We are not sponsored by Audible. I just wanted to say that real quick. We <laughs> just wanted to just wanted to really point that out there. All right, let's get into let's get into the meat of the subject this week. It's four, we're fourteen minutes in. Um, yeah. Let's let's do it. But what about Sora? What? What about? Uh, uh, am I supposed to go? I, all right. You haven't done your week yet. Oh, my week. Well, okay. So I'm playing uh, Gwent. <laughs> I hate you this, uh, so much. Go ahead. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's only so one thing for my week. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Witcher poker, bro. Oh man, I love it. It's so okay. So do, do I don't you know what, know what Gwent is? Have you heard of Gwent? I know. Uh, it, I, I is is it? Isn't it like shitty Hearthstone? <laughs> it's not shitty. It's it's uh, yes, it's shitty Hearthstone. It's okay. So Witcher Three is a game that came out two years ago. It was one of my favorite games. And in that game, there was a game within the game that was Gwent, where you would literally just find people in the world 
that like played this card game called Gwent, and you it, it was this whole entire like really flesh weirdly fleshed out mini game, and people super loved it. And then that's around the time that Hearthstone got super big. And so the CD Projekt Red, the developers of, of uh, Witcher, were like, all right, well, how about we just make this a standalone game? And so they did, and the public beta is out this week. And so I've been playing that. And I, like, I gave Hearthstone a shot, on and on a shot, but, like, it kind of burnt out because I wasn't – well, I didn't enjoy it enough to put in real money. And I felt like if you didn't put in real money, you wouldn't be able to do that well. Like, you just wouldn't be able to crawl out of, like – the doldrums of like bottom tier decks, you know what I mean? So I just kind of dipped away from that. But the, all right, so the, the Gwent, I've, I've only have like four hours in it so far, but it seems pretty fair, honestly, in terms of like the, the, the cards you get for not for like the, the amount of free packs you get, I should say. What's nice about it is that the, the rules are based off of like the, it's a best, each match is best two out of three rounds. But all of your quests are just are just a uh, number of rounds one. So like you could still lose a match, but you can still make progress to gaining your daily quests fit finish. So like a loss, like a like a, a Gwent, like losing a match in Gwent doesn't feel like a total waste of time. Like you're like okay, at least I got a round off that guy. You can almost always get a, a round off of people. I feel like so yeah, Gwent is really cool. It's 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 weirdly like poker because the main thing the the main mechanic that i really like about it is that you don't draw cards that much you just get like you know your first 10 cards and then you're, you're stuck with those and you only get like one or two between rounds so like you have to plan out for a whole entire match with with a limited amount of cards and so you can kind of bluff people and try to go them out to play and they're super sweet cards in the first round so they're like left with nothing else in the second two uh, it's really fun i like i like the mind games and stuff so i don't know it it's cool it's free Somebody play with me. It's on dog. Good old game. It was was this was this your way of being like so someone play someone please. Play. <laughs> well, whatever. I mean, it'd be nice to have friends to play with. It, oh no, I, I'd I'd be willing to give it a shot. Af- yeah. After the event's over. So wait, Gwent doesn't have any kind of like microtransactions in it. It does. No, no, no. It to- it's totally it, it. There is. It's the same model as Hearthstone, where you could buy cards. And then you can also um, or buy, uh, or I forget, buy card with packs. Hearthstone, could you... So you could buy, like, specific cards, right? No, in Hearthstone, you can only... The only the only way to interface with real money in both Hearthstone and I think in Gwent is buying card packs, where they're random. Uh, but what you could do is you could craft cards out of duplicate cards. So like, Or, like, you, you could pretty much trash cards you didn't want to gain, like, basically, like, dust that you'd use to build cards okay. that you actually So it's want. a lot like the Overwatch uh, a little bit, yeah. system. Yeah. Oh, another thing about Gwent's uh, packs that I really like is that you get five cards in each pack, but you get four cards, and then your last card you pick from a pool of three. And that's a guaranteed rare. So that's that's really nice. So, like, basically, it's like, all right, which one of these do I actually want? You know, and, like, it... it, it so you at least have some control of what you're getting in each pack, which is super nice. So, okay. yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to keep playing it every now what and again. What are, like, the microtransaction, like, sizes in Gwent? And, like, oh, I didn't bother looking too deeply, but I'm assuming that the prices are, like, I remember it was, like, five bucks for, like, four packs, or for five packs, something like that. It's, like, about an average dollar a pack, which seems to be, like, the, the standard fare for this kind of stuff. Oh, man. Oh, it sounds so nice coming from like magic where it's like fucking okay, packs cost like four dollars and like right no, no like, that's because you're insane josh because I, <laughs> you, I was in that i was in the card game magic hole but like you were actually oh. in the hole deeper than i was oh i know fucking holy shit it sounds like a paradise thinking <laughs> about like a game where fucking like the best cards are actually available for like a reasonable amount of money. No. Whereas with magic, you can spend like, you know, thirty to a hundred bucks on like the a single card. Let's talk about money transactions. That's my way of transitioning <laughs> into the subject. Loot boxes. Oh, segue. Fine, alright. So here's the main meat of the of the cast this week, because I feel like we're gonna talk about this for a while. Um Alright. The new Overwatch event happened, uh, it's the one year anniversary event, and with that, they released a shit ton of legendary skins, everyone has a dance emote now, Sombra finally has a sit emote, which is not related to the event, but thank god. Um, and, uh, it just, it, it, it just, it's a cool, it's a cool thing, everything is cool, until you actually want those items. Um... 
everything in the Overwatch event is 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 spectacular. The arena is fun. Um, like the way that like the costumes are done, everything just on an aesthetic level, I think is super cool. And obviously, people have different opinions on what the skins are and all that. But yeah, I, I, this is my favorite event by far in terms of quality of skins. I think like there's so many skins that I just want in this event. It's really. really- yeah. Yeah. No. I only saw like, like two skins that I wanted. Okay. Oh, which is... which two skins? Out of curiosity. Um, I think it was like the uh, Genji Sentai skin. Because Hell yeah! It's, it's clearly the best Genji skin. That is so. Oh, definitely for sure. And Zarya's skin is the best one in in, oh, in Overwatch at least. All right, hang on. I, before we get into this, before we get into this, oh, okay. Sorry. So, so how, keep... how do I block uh, Sora real quick? Okay. Okay. Before <laughs> we like, before uh, we get uh, into <laughs> this. <laughs> I can't believe I have to talk over you two. What the fuck is wrong with you guys today? <laughs> God damn. Okay, the whole point of this is that there is over a hundred items in this in this event. Now, each loot box will give you one. Uh, one. It's it's a it's a guaranteed one anniversary item. The problem is is that you will more than likely get duplicates. And they made and essentially in I'm gonna say in about. 25 i spent twice i got like 25 loot boxes with real money if you spend 25 dollars on overwatch loot boxes you'll make about 500 like 500 700 gold right like if you're lucky um and you get like duplicates and shit um but that's like 25 loot boxes you have to spend like 5600 gold to get all the items for this overwatch event and that is ridiculous now granted we do have three weeks to get all the 5, items 5600 wait what that sounds really what you just said sounds oh, really sorry, uh well it's probably close to like fifty thousand. Right? I'm, I'm sorry fifty six thousand. <laughs> i i fucked up the number it's fifty six thousand gold um and that's and it's probably an inflate i mean uh in comparison to like the other events i think we're like roughly Thirty thousand gold or something like that, and the main reason is because uh, the legendary skins this time around are there's like a lot more, so they're clearly inflating everything, right? So, all right, let's talk about this event. <laughs> let's <laughs> we have the ground we have the groundwork set. Let's talk about this event. Um, uh, this... um so so yeah, um, Zarya's new skin is uh, totally the worst Zarya skin. <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you shitting me? No, what? it is the ugliest Zarya skin. Are you kidding me? It's so much. Oh my god, it's the best one of the game so far. Are you no, shitting I me? will die on. I am a fucking Zarya man. The, the fucking. What, what was that other one? The, the one. The, I, I like the champion, the summer game skin art is Zarya. That's the one I have right now, actually. That one's okay. But, like, what was it? The the base one where, like, she has, like, the. the, the she has, like, the. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Like the 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 legendary skin that she got that was with the base game. I forget what the name of it was, oh, but that oh, one is just um, awful. Is that, in from? is that one it? Maybe. Are you, are you talking about, about Cyber Goth? Yeah, are you talking about Cyber Goth? Yeah, Cyber Goth. Yes, yes, yes. That, I mean, that. everybody agrees that Cyber Goth is like one of the worst skins in the game. But yes, I, so I, I, would, I, I wouldn't say that. Uh, all right, whatever. I don't want to. Be, I don't want to shit on skins. I just want to praise. Oh, don't skins. worry. I, I won't judge you for having shit taste. You know oh, what, Josh? Right. That's how you treat everything in life. So I'm not surprised that this is how you treat the skins in Overwatch. <laughs> whatever. It, it, sorry, the new Zarya skin isn't even my favorite of the skins. It's not even top five. I'm no, not even fucking die. Tracer never... is the best Hell skin. Yeah. Tracer no, has I... the best fucking skin. She has a it's blue so hoodie. Good. She has blue hair. She's paintball themed with, with, with fucking graffiti stockings and she looks cool. Splatoon and, now. Splatoon Tracer. I, I can't I cannot deal. Okay. So the reason why this is like such a big fucking deal is because I spent my entire week grinding loot boxes this week. When I wasn't like doing like real life shit I was in Overwatch playing with one of you guys or Gang Mudo or Chels or uh, Water Tiger and and I was grinding loot boxes and it's I mean and that part is fun it's the horrifying disappointment of every box having nothing but sprays and like voice lines I don't want and getting skins for characters I never play <laughs> like that's the horrible part of all of this like that's the reason why I'm 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 upset about this because there's over a hundred items to go through. I've spent twenty five dollars as it is, and I only hear horror stories. Like Gang Mudo spent forty dollars. We found out yesterday, and she got everything she wanted. 
But like that's nice. still that's still forty dollars. Yeah, and, and no, Josh that's the was, whole game right there. <laughs> and, and and like and Josh was telling me about one of his friends who spent fifty dollars and he didn't even get the oh, tracer no, no. skin. He, he bought like the uh, fifty pack. Oh, okay. So he spent like which is forty bucks. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. So he he bought fifty loot boxes and he did not get the tracer skin in it. And I think he got like two thousand gold out of it. Damn. So not even enough to get the skin. Like this is. Okay. Granted, I also had another friend who got it in like his first, like the free loot box you get from like opening the game after the event started. Right. I mean, that's just the thing. This he is got the dance emote too it. for the like, tracer. Uh, and I, I got the dance emote for tracer. That was the first one I got. But like, yeah, there you go. I, I, I just. Okay, look. Guess what? If I just tab out and play Overwatch right now, I need to get some skins. <laughs> no, there, that was that realized oh, moment no. of we could totally just play Overwatch and do this about? fucking cast. <laughs> we did that oh, yesterday. We might as. We. <laughs> I mean, I mean, for fuck's sake, Josh, you missed out on it. But Sora and I were streaming yesterday Overwatch, and like that was a fucking blast. Um, but like, it. This just this okay for the one year event, right? Like I thought, I didn't think it was gonna be a temporary event when they told when they said that oh yeah new dance emotes and and voice lines and legendary skins for some reason my mind didn't default to oh this is a temporary thing like I when I when I found out that like oh shit you have three weeks to get everything I kind of went into panic mode a bit with this like it's incredibly problematic for I mean the events while great and fun. Like, I, I, I had a blast of Uprising, but while the events are, like, great, this is, like, I feel obligated to play this game that I love. Oh, I mean, it's like, I've had friends who have no interest in playing Overwatch, typically, come back to the game because they really, really want the Tracer skin. They're playing Overwatch just yes, about playing Overwatch. And, and there is something to be said with how good a new set of skins is. Uh, re or I should say how good Blizzard is at re-engaging the player base with these skins and stuff like that. You know, it's it's awesome and it's great that we're getting all this content for heavy quotes free. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, but it, it's still there are a lot of frustrations, and I feel like I feel like there is a little bit of give that Blizzard. I feel like Blizzard could ease up a little bit on it and make the player base happier while still not cutting into profits too much you know what i mean like i, I uh, well one of, one of the things i heard about was like uh what was it they could do something where like you double the exp or you double like the amount of anniversary items you get in each loot box or you or just something to increase the amount of output you're getting because we streamed I, for three I, hours I, yesterday we streamed like for i would three personally be fine with like you know like, everything was staying the same as it was, except, you know, being able to buy the skins after the event is over. No, right. and, through some and, means. And, and, well, that's right. another Even thing, Even if it's right? only cash. Well, that's another thing, where it's like, these skins don't feel like they should be part of an event-exclusive thing. Like, these feel like these should be... When was the last time we got, it like, base in-game legendary skins? Like, that's how I thought this was going to go down, and it didn't, and, like, it's, it's weird... Because like I mean, the last one we got was uh, the what was it the grief heart and like the uh, Eichenwald skins for Reinhardt right and, and yeah the, and those and skins are no, great those skins and the city are modes. fucking great and the city like, modes the city modes should exactly the, like that's what perplexes me and you were talking about this too Mitch where we're like the the dance emotes are temporary but the city modes like you know like that came out I think with Eichenwald and those are permanent you know like that and that was awesome like. It, I don't know. Yeah, I, I just wish there wasn't a time limit on this shit. You know, even if you, even if like, I think I think Josh has it exactly right. It's like even if they kept the skins for sale for three k and you couldn't get them in loot boxes, I would be happy with that. I'll be fucking happy with that. I mean, I'd gonna... be fine with it even if you could just like you know buy the skins with real cash after the fact. Yeah, direct to cash would be sweet, but they but I that would the Blizzard would just not get nearly as enough as much money. You know, like even if they charge like ten bucks for the skin. You know, like there's a reason that, that like here's the storm you used to have that pay model where you just buy skins directly and no one fucking bought skins. And so that's why they, they I mean, you know, it, it's Overwatch. something where you could just keep it as something that's, a, you know, a, an option, I guess. I think League of Legends works similarly, does it not? Where it's like you can buy skins with like IP and RP. 
right. unless I am wrong. Um, I, 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 I don't know. I don't play League, so. Like, I feel like there does need to be that, you know, sort of give where you should be able to keep accessing the skins later on. Well, uh, okay. that's it doesn't that's you know okay you can sort but of get direct access. I was going to say that like Hearth or not Hearthstone but uh Heroes of the Storm does that a bit where right. like uh I I didn't I only recently got into Heroes of the Storm and like you can still get like some of their event uh skins for like some of the characters yes. like Kerrigan <laughs> and like um and Azmuth whatever Ad Azmadan yeah, whatever. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, we have, we've had a conversation of how I I have no interest in learning any of their names. <laughs> but, yeah, well, well, so it seems like they're going half and half with Heroes of the Storm, where there are some uh, event skins, like quote unquote event skins, that are that are for sale, but uh, some of them, like uh, most notably, like the Christmas ones, you can't buy, uh, like the Winter Veils ones or whatever. So. I am really curious to see how they're going to handle like when when like a holiday rolls around. You know, I think they might copy off of Overwatch uh, and just do limited time skins, where you can only get them in loot boxes. I mean, I mean that. I mean that. See, I mean that's fine. I guess it's just at the end of the day, all this really boils down to is I just feel like out of all the events that like had to take place in Overwatch, this this one is. Don't get me wrong. All the skins are fucking cool, and I've said it a thousand times by now to everyone I know, but. I have pushed the fucking free weekend as hard as I could because this was the this was cool. This entire weekend you were able to play Overwatch for free. Yep. And like and that and and I we had a fan of the channel who joined us on the stream yesterday, Next Tien, who who joined us and, and had a good time. And like I I hope. And and like Blizzard does a lot of cool moves, but this one just feels really shitty. Like this one, right. like, this mean, one hurts think... a little. Like, to go back to, like, you know, magic, I guess, when you're going to make, like, a multi-hundred dollar or a thousand dollar deck in magic, the recommendation for obtaining the cards that you're going to play in that deck is not to go out and buy booster packs. It's to buy, you know, singles off the, uh, like, secondary market. And Because it is, in the long run, going to be much, much cheaper to you know, buy them directly from other people rather than relying on this, like, RNG system to, like, hand it to you. I mean... And it's something where I feel like Overwatch is sort of missing a way to well, undercut that RNG. From my understanding, there was supposed to be some form of, like, uh, like trading skin thing, or, like, they, there was talks of it for a little bit there, where, like... Uh, Kaplan, or I think Jeff Kaplan said something along the lines of like, you know, there's going to be some sort of either barter system of skins or, or to, you know, they were trying to implement something because people were getting duplicates and it was really pissing people off like a lot. Yeah. Um, so like they, this is a persistent problem. And uh, I mean, it's going to be something that will feel like more and more the longer the game lives. Um, it's going to be something where, like, they'll they'll have to find a solution that works. Maybe yeah, and, and, and Jeff Kaplan has mentioned before in like in in chats or not chats, but in the forums where he's oddly active for someone who's the director of the game, um, that like they are listening to like the feedback and stuff. It's just they don't have an immediate thing to. Uh, to I offer. think it'd be difficult to apply something like you know the skin system they have for like weapons in like a game like CS:GO or like stuff is of similar elk where they have like a virtual economy sort of riding on these like skins that like float around because it also makes certain skins like really 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 damn expensive i think depending on rarity i know certain csgo skins go for like two thousand dollars or something mm. which is like mind-boggling for something that's just a cosmetic on your gun that doesn't affect anything well i mean i guess i'll just say this much it, i just the event is is still super cool, and I told and if you play Overwatch on PC, totally hit us up because right, or at least at least hit me up, hit me up <laughs> because I'm I am Mitchell wants all the loot boxes. Yeah, no, I am I am I I have I play this game at weird hours of the day, so like anytime I can get into a group and just grind the shit out of the EXP, like I am I am just I'm down to clown. I'm down to fucking clown, and like uh, I noticed that Crazy Wolf Gang Ninja too. That is a sick name, Crazy Wolf Gang Ninja too. <laughs> um, um, says where that Lucio gameplay at? 
Man, I wish, right? Um, I've actually been, uh, re- not to sidetrack a bit, but I've actually been playing a little bit more of the assassin characters, uh, or the offense what? heroes. I've been playing, okay. I've been playing Tracer and Genji and Sombra out of, like, all the characters in fucking Overwatch. Like, I still play support, but, like, Josh and I were playing earlier with Chels and, uh, and, like, I was like, no, I don't want to play heels. I always play heels. I want to try someone different. And I was just Sombra in- embracing my coward tactics. And that was just <laughs> that. Was just that. Um, <laughs> but, like, for real, though, like, uh, this is, this is going to be one of those weird, uh, this is going to be one of those weird, like, situations where, like, next week, hopefully, I'll come back and, and either have the skin and not feel this horrible pressure to keep playing, <laughs> like, in, like, nonstop, or it's going to get worse. <laughs> so, the, the impending do, because that's the biggest fear right now. The biggest fear is that we, like, we do another stream, right? And we grind those loot boxes, and I cannot express how fucking disappointed I was. I knew it was a possibility. I didn't think it was going to be that fucking real, where all three loot boxes were complete trash. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Water Tiger was the only one out of all of us that got something decent, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, like, yeah. like it, it's so fucking real. And I and I had and I talked to one of my roommates right after the the, the stream, and I was like, I I cannot, I cannot spend another fifteen dollars or another however money like real right. ass money to get these skins but there is a pressure there is a stupid there pressure is. to to get these skins in, in in a small amount of time um well, like so every time i'm on that edge of like i want to dump like I, like when i'm about to buy like the 50 dollar like or the 40 the 40 dollar bundle or whatever like i just want to fucking do it just get it over with like i think about like even if i only spent like uh 20 dollars on it I could buy all of Hollow Knight for fifteen dollars, or I could get the chance to get some of the skins that I want. You know what I mean? Like that's just that's what prevents <laughs> me from jumping in on these loot boxes. Like I like, god damn it! Well, you could buy a twenty-hour Metroidvania that is a critical success for fifteen dollars, or you could buy twenty loot boxes. Yeah, like, and, come and, on. and 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 I if mean, the, you if could the buy the game for somebody for the amount that you like buy fifty loot boxes. Right? For. Yeah, Overwatch itself. You're right. You got fuck uh, Hollow Knight. Overwatch itself is twenty bucks right now. Like, oh god! I ah oh, damn I mean, it! You could buy two copies for your friends and give it to them instead of buying you know fifty loot boxes. That's right. Oh my yeah. god! I. Oh, it's it's just it's such a garbage fucking scenario to be in right now. It, uh, well, I will, and I will then say, you can tell yourself what matters more to me: having my friends having fun with me, or or the tracer skin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say okay. So, so I do want to say two things because I am uh, like I I don't want to shit on Overwatch totally because all right. So two things: one, even though we ended up with shit, I still had a fun time on the stream, and I still oh, felt yeah. like I didn't waste my time playing a game. You know, oh, it was disappointing, end, but it was still fun. Right, and so I'm still enjoying the game. That's a good sign, I guess. No, it, two. This is way better than the alternative. Uh, like they could. This is way better than what how it used to be with most shooters, in that you would have to buy instead of paying for loot boxes or paying for cosmetics, you would have to pay for new characters, pay for new uh, maps, you know, and splintering the community basically. So, you know, as much as as many as even though this this system has this numerous downsides. It's still it's still serving the benefit of keeping the community united with free, meaningful content. You know, that's and that's something that's still that's still praiseworthy. I think. Like, like uh, I think, granted, like uh, I do appreciate you know good business practices like that. But at the end of the day, that is technically looking after the health of you know the game's bottom line rather than like the uh, customers. Like, as a consumer advocate, sort of, and also somebody who took, like, a couple years of undergraduate psychology, which actually means zero anything, by the way. You need to get to grad school to do really uh, interesting stuff. Um, It seems like it sort of pushes the wrong buttons, gets into, like, that Skinner box loop of, like, you know, at least with loot boxes, I guess. Where it feel it gets to the point where it feels a little bit exploitative to me, right? And it's a little bit off-putting where it's like, you know, like 
right now I, t I try to keep my like playing Overwatch down to okay, so maybe I'll play competitive every once in a while, and then I'll do like my weeklies to uh, get my like three loot boxes. And usually I won't play more than that because honestly, at this point, it's something where I don't really feel like engaging with the uh, grind anymore. And it's something where I feel like it, you know, I'm being taken for a ride if I try too hard in the loot box rat race, I guess. Right, yeah, I feel you. Because there are many other things that I enjoy a lot more than, you know, just like grinding away at, you know, Overwatch joylessly, I guess. That's the key point, I guess, is that when the pursuit of skins and cosmetics subsumes the pursuit of the game as its own end is where I think it loses me. Well, yeah. <laughs> Well, I just, I don't know, I'm just so fucking bummed. I, it's just taking a lot out of me, you know, like... Well, I mean... That's like, I had the most fun that I've had in Overwatch lately, in, like, the last, like, few days since the boss oh. began. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's no fucking doubt. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to... Uh, normally, I don't see uh, Sora on for, like, Overwatch, but, like, it's been fun to playing with him. It's it like, been, I got on with been. some friends, and we did, like, some stupid, like, shitty uh, theme team comps, like, you know... Okay, like, you know, I got together with like three, four people and they went, okay, so all healers. And then we all locked in healers in quick play and we somehow won. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, all, all heavy tanks and then everybody ran super heavy tanks and we still won without a healer. God. And uh, it's a lot of fun to just like mess around in the game. It honestly is. Oh, yeah. Um, it. God. God, I uh, I just wanted to bring to the attention the Crazy Wolf Gang Ninja Two, which sounds like the sequel to a, an amazing 1980s film. Uh, asks if any of us play on the PS4. Um, we're all PC at this point, right? I used to be PS4, um, and I, then I have some friends who are still wondering where I've been, <laughs> <laughs> and like I don't know how to answer that I have I I've, I've been on the PC this entire I've like I've I've missed like two events on. Because I've been playing on the PC with you guys, um, like I, the problem is is that I might have to go back to console for a little bit because I do have uh, some other friends over there. But like uh, after the event, because the grind <laughs> during the the grind during the event is super. It, it reminds me a lot of like when a patch hits Final Fantasy fourteen, right? Like yep. everyone is active right now. Do what you need to do because, like, if you want to get these, like, if you want to not have any wait times for fucking dungeons, then this is the time to do it. And this is the time to play Overwatch because we have the free weekend, we have the event going on, everyone's grinding the event. Like, it's just, it's the time to play. Like, I don't know. But, yeah, so all, all in all, all I'll say about the loot box situation is this. Um, I... <sighs> I, I really wish it wasn't like this. I still love Overwatch, and I still love the fact that I'm playing the game with my friends. But as fun as it's been, I have never been hit with more disappointment in what comes out of these loot boxes than with this specific event. Because normally I don't care. But because there's so many legendary skins and so many things I do want, this feels like a real bummer. Yeah, like, like I'm I'm sitting on two thousand four hundred and fifty gold or something like that, and like there's the moment where I'm like, oh, but Sombra has a dance emote, but I need the tracer skin. <laughs> like I feel I feel I feel poor in game, and I feel shitty about it. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about the Overwatch event. It's super fun, and I will come back and talk about it next week. Uh, I mean, I guess everybody has an event like that in Overwatch, or has had one so far. For me, it was the Uprising event, because I liked a lot of the skins there. Oh, yeah, no, the Uprising event was super fun. Um, I, I feel bad that I missed uh, I missed most of Year of the Rooster, so I wasn't able to get, like, uh, I really wanted the Zenyatta skin from that one. <laughs> but like, like, I feel like I spent my uh, cash on the, uh, or my uh, credits on, like, the wrong skin in the uh, winter events because, uh, like, I got the Winston skin, and then here comes uh, Year of the Rooster, and suddenly uh, Winston has a Sun Wukong skin that's like super sweet, and it's like, ah, shit. No, no, you spend on that sweet Yeti, though. <laughs> <sighs> 
ne- never, never regret the, never regretty the Yeti. Don't, don't do it, yeah, Josh. Sounds, yeah. God damn it. All right. So that pretty much covers the Overwatch event until next week when we when I will update you on whether or not I got that skin. <laughs> Mitchell, you, next week you just come back. Oh my god, guys! Overwatch is so fucking dope. It's the best. It's, oh, got a treasure skin. I see. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I, I life is new. <laughs> <laughs> Colors are brighter. Oh my god! Oh boy. Ah, oh, fuck. But, uh, where do we go from here? Well, where do we go from here? I'll tell you where we go from here. We're going to start closing up the podcast. <laughs> really? No! No, you fucking no, I'm, I'm lying. I'm blatantly lying to you. Okay, well, I don't know. <laughs> Shit, I have other stuff I want to talk about. I mean, the, the fucking... I got that new Fire Emblem game. Did you guys tell want to talk me, about that? Tell, okay, tell me how the new Fire Emblem game is, because even though I do not own a 3DS, I was a fan of Awakening, and I did want to play Conquest, and, and that one told the whole... It fakes? I, okay, yeah. so for, I, 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 liked, I really liked Awakening. Uh, all right, so I've been a Fire Emblem fan since the first... The, the, what is it? The seventh one came out in America that, that was just called Fire Emblem. What is it? Fire Emblem Reckon No Ken. Whatever, you know the one. The one with Ellie Wood. The one that I made you play in the channel for, like, it was our very first video, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I've been playing Fire Emblem ever since that came out. Um, but I haven't dabbled in any of the uh, non-localized versions. I haven't downloaded... I, I tried playing Roy's game, which was a prequel. Whatever, I'm digressing. Um, so... This is the first time I'm playing through this version of Fire, uh, this Fire Emblem specifically. So Fire Emblem Echo Shadows of Valentia is a remake uh, of the second Fire Emblem game in, like ever made, like in Japan, right? And so previously it was only in Japan. This is the first time we're getting it in English. And it, some parts of it I really, really like. I really dig the new art style. Well, it's more like an older art style. Like, I, I don't get me wrong. I, I really like Awakening and Fates' art style. But, uh, you know, especially in Fates, it started getting a little too fan servicey, you know, like with some of the with some of the, the character art, like Camilla specifically, like just I, I know people like her and she's a fun character and all that. But like some of the character designs were just really jarring to me and not very Fire Emblem E. Um, so I'm really happy that like this, the, this, this art style is a little bit more like kind of clack like. Not classical. It's still very anime, but like it still feels a little bit more believable in terms of character designs. Like th- these actually look like people in a medieval fantasy world, you know. Um, so yeah, uh, the story is neato burrito so far. It's uh, it's pretty. I don't want to say generic, but it is definitely pretty standard. It feels like an old NES game story with like embellishments on it, I guess. But that's like not a problem. I'm still pretty engaged. I like all the characters. I like most of the characters. Most of the side characters specifically are interesting. Um, uh, and like some of the new gameplay tw- tweaks that they did are super neat. Like archers can attack from like three spaces away now. That's crazy. They have a crazy long range, and they can attack what up close too now too, which is awesome. Um, magic like is there's no. Uh, Magic is used by siphoning your health, so like that's a weird give and take where you have to like, all right, like I want to use my strong spell, but I'm going to take three points of damage or something like that. Um, that's neat. Uh, just like a tons of little tiny tweaks that um, that kind of change up the way you think about Fire Emblem. Uh, the and also they added in like a dungeon exploration thing, like where you're literally moving around in a 3D space. It feels like Persona, actually, weirdly enough, like you're moving, exploring Tartarus. Except for when you fight like a guy, like when like when you when you go into battle, it's not turn based. It's just a skirmish. It's just a little mini Fire Emblem map. So it's bizarre, but it's cool. I like it. Uh, it makes the it, it's a nice little breakup of the gameplay. The one thing I just do not like right now, and it's a common complaint, is that the fucking maps, the maps, man. Holy shit, the actual maps are so boring. They're so bad. Like it, it so they're they're clearly like straight ports from the NES version. Like they didn't touch those for whatever reason. And some of them are just like it, it's literally like, all right, here's a plain field that's totally open with no terrain on. Well, maybe some shrub, maybe some trees every now and again. Go out, go out, go have fun, go nuts. And then it's like, okay, well, whatever. And then like, all right, here's the next map. It's a map with a river in it. All right. That's it. It's a one space river that go that bisects the map. That's your map. You know, it's just and then oh, here's a desert where oh, people can only move one space, and that's all we did to it. Like you can only just move one space now. Like fuck movement, right? Like you just that's it. 
there's a castle over in the corner where no one, no units are, so you don't even interact with the castle. Like, I don't know. It there just seems to it just seems to take a lot of steps back in terms of the map design, and that's what's really killing it for me right now. Um, I realize I'm kind of talking to a wall right now. With fire no, emblems. No, unloaded it's, a it's, lot I mean, of fire emblem. <laughs> you're not. I mean, I, I like I don't know. I played the mobile game and I played like you know other played games. a little bit. Of- yeah, <laughs> but, uh, I, I have some context, and like it's it does sound interesting. I, th- I feel like the problem is is that like uh, uh, this is gonna sound blasphemous, like horribly, horribly blasphemous. But I think I can't play. I don't think I can play like Fire Emblem without like being like, why can't I stack all of my guys in one guy and attack them like a tower? Or <laughs> why can't, why can't why can't I ride one of my units and like do a sick combo or turn one of my units into a sword and like like this right. guy I had this guy has ruined me <laughs> on, on tactics RPGs. I, I honestly think that I feel like with tactics RPG specifically, you always like whatever you play first. You know what I mean? Where like I like that, but except with like a, like with Tactics Ogre and Final Fantasy Tactics, I've tried to get into those games because those people praise those games up and down, and it's just like. Oh, but why isn't this like Fire Emblem though? You know, like where are the support conversations? Like, why can't I? Why can't I support? And what? What? Or like, what? Why? Are the, why do the enemies take so long to die? Like, oh man, like one of my guys died. Like, I should restart. Well, wait, except I don't have to. I don't. Uh, this is weird. You know what I mean? Like, why isn't this like more like Fire Emblem? You know? And that's just because what I'm. That's what I'm used to, and that's that's what I've grown to love, right? So why can't I, I get my character to nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine? And and still not be strong enough to beat like the super boss. <laughs> no, I, I, you're absolutely right. I feel like I feel like that's like, I'll tell. I feel like that's how I feel about fun. Like I feel like with like RPGs in general. Like you think? Oh yeah, but for me at least because with, because like I always use Final Fantasy X as like my anchor point comparison piece for any right. RPG I play. Um, and like when it comes to tactics games, like I blatantly use Disgaea because at least with Disgaea, well, I don't, I I want to believe I use Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, but I don't. I use Disgaea. <laughs> 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 um, and that being said, you know, and not to not to go too much on a on a different tangent on that, I am excited. I I've decided that I will pick up a copy of Disgaea Five for the Switch at some point. Um. And I'm, I'm I I cannot wait to dive and just lose myself into that game again, but it does sound like final. It does sound like Fire Emblem is as a how do I word this as as a game that like you know is like a remake or a remaster. How do you yep. how do you feel about it when like because obviously they they made changes to the game and everything. Like how do you feel about it from that perspective? I, I, I think there's a lot of it that I really like, and I'm enjoying it already more than I did with uh, with uh, uh, Fates, just because the story is much better than Fates. I like the characters in the story much, much better than Fates right now. Uh, I'm still very early on, though, so it could take a nosedive for sure. Um, but Fates, I just never found the, the connection of those characters. Um, so I think writing is, is better. It's, it's been a huge improvement. But like overall, like it definitely feels like an old game. Like it feels like a brand new game, except in the map design, you know. And that map design is a huge glaring flaw. Maybe like like I don't know. Like maybe if you're new to Fire Emblem, you won't really notice it as much. But uh, and I definitely think this is a good one to jump in on. Honestly, like the, all of them are like uh, you don't need to know anything about Fire Emblem at all. In fact, this one changes up a lot of things, so it would be kind of interesting to see new fans jump in. Oh yeah. But. In the context of a remake, it's a really good remake, I think. I, I, I having never played the original version, uh, I've seen screenshots and I've seen like little bits of pieces of it. They added a fucking shitload of context to the story. You know what I mean? Like you can only pack in so much text on a on a, on a NES game. So um, they definitely gave the story and the characters a little bit. Way, they fleshed them out way way more, which is super appreciated. Mm. And the, from that aspect, really fucking cool. Just those maps, man. Fuck. It's cool, man. It's so, cool. I'll keep trucking along. I'm having a good time. I'll let you guys know how it is. Yeah. Um. I just want to. Uh, you. It remind. Sorry. Talking about the switch for half a second reminded me. I, I wanted to at least say something. Um. About uh, another switch title that I'm kind of looking forward to, and I was hoping that I could get either. Well, I could get you hype. I can't get Josh hype. He doesn't have one. Um. <laughs> Monster Hunter is coming oh, to the switch. Oh shit! 
Yes. Which, yes. Yeah, that's right. There's another game to give up on. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, like, another game that I will give my this life up for. This is the one that, uh, that they didn't port to America, right? Right, yeah, so here's the thing, right? Like, so this is, this is Monster Hunter Double Cross, which is an enhanced version of Monster Hunter Generations, right? Yeah. And so we got Maybe Generations, so. we did not get the enhanced version Double Cross. Yep. I don't understand. It's like, holy cow! I thought yeah. everything got localized these days. I, I'm, I'm fast. I wonder how well uh, Monster Hunter Generation sold. I know Four did really well in the West because they, they put a lot of marketing into Four. I feel like I feel like Four was like the big push to get well, Westerners interested in them. I don't know. Monster it's like I always thought like you know Dark Souls crowd would enjoy Monster Hunter a oh, lot. Oh, sure. I'm sure there's a huge overlap in fan bases there or potential fans, I should say. And I guess it might just be that like. Maybe the people who own the Souls games didn't really own the handheld devices that uh, Monster Hunter typically came, came out right. on, but it makes me a little bit sad to see that, like, e even in this day and age, we do have games that do not get localized from Japan. Right. E well, even when we get, like, these all these visual novels getting localized that are, like, hundreds of, like, basically, like, millions of words long. I would... I would place a wager on the idea that like if they knew that this was a possibility then why then like then they should just make the one copy for the states honestly i mean no offense to the people who own the 3ds but like if if they're gonna move forward with a console right and this is supposed to be the replacement for the handheld and and the console for, for nintendo i wouldn't i feel like it would be a waste of money to make to make a version for the 3ds that's just me, right? Um, yeah. So like, I don't really because I, I guess it's like I I would see it as like we're missing out if they didn't have the plan to then release it on a different thing here, but they're still releasing it here. It's just not on the thing that like people have right now, but they will have in time, hopefully. <laughs> I not everyone's crazy like me, Josh. Not everyone's crazy and, and spent like uh, a stupid amount of time to guarantee a switch purchase. Have we have we um have we gotten a guarantee release for, for the Switch version in America? I really hope we get it. I I have not heard anything about a guarantee, but something tells me that like that like people are already hyping it up over here and like there is a demand for it. Monster Hunter did well. Like there is a fan there's a fan base here, they'd be stupid not to do it. That's right. The, that's how I see. And then Josh's point is completely one hundred percent valid again. <laughs> like that's it's that's, like uh, it's something where it feels wrong. I guess it's like sort of like go. Oh. So we have an established fan base. We have a game for this handheld console that's released in the U.S. And then we're not going to release a second one that came out. <laughs> Yeah. Then, oh, so uh, okay, they we we're, we're not going to do that, but you know, let's let's go ahead and like release one for the Switch, which doesn't have like very good, uh, very many like early adopters yet, I assume. And it's it feels like sort of a little bit of cognitive like dissonance, I guess, where it's like so, like would they just. Like, it's something where they're choosing to localize something specifically for this, except, you know, like, you could have cashed on it beforehand already. And I don't know how much of this would have to do, like, the localization thing would have to do with, like, plans for the Switch. Like, I don't think it really had anything much to do with it, personally. I think it was just, you know, they, them thinking, like, the bean counters thinking, well, we won't make enough money off of this for some right. reason. Right, I think maybe they saw a huge decline in sales from four to four to cross, so they figured, all right, like reading the tea leaves. Like I, I don't know, we, we we have no idea that there there are very smart people behind these decisions to localize and not localize games, right? So like it, it sucks when we don't get something that we want, but we have to also understand that there's a fairly fairly niche appeal to an enhanced version of a game that already has a niche that that already has a niche appeal in and of itself in the West, you know. Japan is obviously anything goes because like e fucking everybody plays Monster Hunter in Japan. Like holy goddamn Christ, those people like Monster Hunter. Woof. That is true. They do. <laughs> they do enjoy their Monster Hunter. 
<laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I think we'll get the Switch version. We'll get the Switch version, and I will play. I will buy it. And, and you are going to buy it too, right, Mitch? And we're going to fucking play some Monster Hunter. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you are you under the implication that I will not lose my entire existence to Monster Hunter again? <laughs> I I've done, I did it once before when none of you when I had no friends to play this game, and I will <laughs> gladly do it again. If you um, have one friend to play this game with. Yeah, no. I mean, I jumped in with four, and you were very helpful with me get, getting me started. And I, I dumped, like, 40 hours into that game, which is fairly, to be fair, not much. So, but I, I and I, I got pulled away from it, but I do really want to get back to it. I, I, I feel like I, I'm ready to jump back into the Monster Hunter series, and I'm excited to. You know, there's a hunger there for it. Oh, well, especially with the with the changes they made to Cross, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, like, I feel like I would have played more if I... Still had a 3ds. Hey, Wait. 2ds XL. <laughs> yeah, are you getting? Are you planning on getting that? Uh, at some point, yes. So, um, but yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the subjects that I feel like are the ones that at least I felt like needed. Oh, oh, there is one more thing I need to bring up before I give it off to someone else or decide to immediately close the cast because it's funny to me. Damn. <laughs> He's like a dead, dead, dead man switch on, like his thumb is on the kill switch for the cast. <laughs> <laughs> um, we talk for 20 minutes, they cut the stream off. No, <laughs> um, okay, so we're trying to get the an anime night started back up again. Um, I, would, uh-huh. I would love to do that again. Um, so far, it, it's looking like it might be uh, Tuesdays or it might be uh, it might be Thursdays nights after your stream. Obviously, we do have a lot of fans on the West Coast, so this kind of helps out like even time shit out. Um, yeah. So like, uh, we are looking to do more anime night stuff. Uh, we I have a dedicated promise to one of our very specific fans, uh, uh, DM, that I will finish free. I will. I have to finish the first season of Free. That is a promise I made. I have. I have to do it. There is. There is no stopping it. I will finish Free. But the, <laughs> but the, but the reason why I bring this up is because I'm also looking into getting different series uh, for Anime Night. Um, the more that you guys are like involved in Anime Night, the more I will like. The more I will want to do it because I think I've said I said it once before that I wanted to do Anime Night and then I totally blanked on it and fell asleep before well before everyone like got things started so like if you if you leave suggestions uh and if you like you know have an idea because i know one of the things josh and i were talking about or uh not josh no it wasn't you josh but like wait was it was it both of you have i talked to you guys about recreators yet right i mentioned i think no. i mentioned it yesterday i've been meaning to watch it eventually because like i i've heard nothing but good things about it um <laughs> So I just wanted to bring it up real quick that we will be trying to do that again. So yeah, I just want to. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's the last of my topics, I think. So uh, anyone can take anyone can take it from here. Anyone, anyone can take it from here. Oh shit! I think I think something got fucked up on the stream. Uh, hmm. Awaiting endpoint. Let's see here. I, uh, real quick, guys, I might have fucked something up. Um, there may be no audio on, on this end. Um, hmm. This is weird. I'm gonna have to close out the Discord real quick and see if I can get something else going. Quit the Discord. Um, if this doesn't come back, I guess that will be the technical end of the Velvet Cast. <laughs> After threatening it for so long, I have now finally ended it on my own. It was me. I was the one who fucked this up. And a waiting endpoint. Oh shit. Okay. Um hmm. So it says that this is a Discord issue. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. Um <laughs> Hey DM! <laughs> ah shit. Well guys, uh thanks for joining us on another episode of the Velvet Cast. Um, if we can't get this stuff fixed in the next, like, couple seconds, then I'm, I'm probably just gonna end the cast. Cause, um, yeah. So, we're gonna, yeah, nothing's, nothing's changing. Um, I'm just gonna end the cast this week, and I guess we're just gonna have to, uh, yeah, it, it broke, it broke. Um, uh, yeah, so we're gonna end the cast this week. Uh, next time on The Velvet Room, next time, uh, 
tomorrow we're doing more Persona 5 at 8, uh, 8, 8, 8 p.m. EST. And then Sora's doing another stream. I think he's going to finish off Bayonetta. Um, I'm so sorry, DM. I see that you just got here, and I feel bad now. But, yeah. So I guess we're just going to end things. Uh, join us next Monday, as all... Or next... Not next Monday. Join us next Sunday. You can tell that, like, I was not planning to be the only one here. All right. See you guys next time on The Velvet Room. Fuck.